All right, so the formula, which is uh, the distance between two points is the difference between the two x's squared plus the difference between the two y's. What? Squared, all right? Then you take the square root of that, all right? Now, uh, next year, I will show you how they come up with both of these formulas. Uh, as a proof, all right? But this year, um, we're not proving them. You're just accepting them as true, all right? Now, eventually, everyone will be able to look at this question number one and just say, well, the distance between those two points is just what? Can anybody tell me the distance between those two points? Zero. How about 14? All right, you should be able to look at that and tell me it's just 14, but I will show you that. Um, I'll show you how you, come on, I'm tr let me get through. All right, I prefer no homework than a lot of homework. All right, so the distance between those two points is 14. Now let's figure it out. All right, first and foremost, there are two points here. That's why they call this point over here x1 and y1. The second point over here is called x2 and y2. Now, you guys should be good enough to understand, does it really matter if you do the first point and then the second point or the second point and then the first point? No, the order, right? Distance can't be negative, all right? When somebody says something about negative direction, all right, the negative refers to whether you're going forward or what, backwards, all right? It has nothing to do, you can't have a negative foot, all right? So with that being said, all right, all we're doing is we're writing down D equals, then you're doing the square root. And we'll just write out the first one and the second one. Uh, you will be able to just uh, do the mental math. All right, so x2 is going to be negative 7 minus negative 7. And then we're going to square that quantity. Sorry, my pencil is acting up today. Plus, then you're going to do y2, which is 8 minus negative six, and then you're gonna square it, all right? So now obviously the double negatives make a what? And so these guys just do what? Right, so that's like zero squared, obviously is zero. Plus, now over here you end up with 14 squared, but there's no reason to do the 14 squared because when you take the square root of a square, they do what? Cancel. They cancel out. So the distance between those two points is 14. Now, hopefully you're asking yourself, well, how did he know it was 14 before he even started? All right, the reason we knew it, because they are what? No, no, no. No, it's this. If you are graphing these points, negative seven, negative six, would be somewhere over here, and negative seven, eight would be up here. So these points here are vertical, all right? The two points are vertical. So the y doesn't change. I mean, the x doesn't change, it's just the y that's changing. So we went from negative six to eight, which is just what? 14, all right? Just like on question number three, I'd want you to be able to look at that and say, that's just what? That's just eight, exactly. Now, for those of you guys who are paying attention, if you were to draw this out, two negative eight would be here and two zero would be about right there. So it's just the Y distance that you've traveled. And the Y distance you traveled is what? Eight. So that's how we know without starting that the answer is eight. All right, but let's go ahead and use the formula real quick. So we say distance is equal to the square root. And then 
again, it doesn't matter if you go this minus this, or if you go in the other direction, if you go this minus this, it doesn't matter. All right, eventually you square and the square turns it to what? Positive, so it doesn't matter. All right, so here we go. So if I do two minus two squared plus zero plus eight squared, and that just becomes eight squared square root. So the distance between those two points is what? Eight. All right, that's, it's really simple. All right. Did you guys do that last year? Did you do a distance? Mm -hmm. I don't think we did. Because we haven't done square roots. Oh, well, we didn't like square roots. We did like the distance between two points on a number line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so question number five. Let's see if we can do that. So I have D is equal to square root. So it would be negative four minus eight squared plus negative five. I don't really have to do zero, but we will. Now negative four and negative eight makes what? And then when I square that, that becomes 144 plus 25 which equals the square root of 169, which then you would just tell me is what? 13. 13. The distance between those two points is 13. <clears throat> Anybody have any problems with that? Again, very easy, very easy. All right, so let's set up and do number seven, just to make sure. D equals square root. Come on now, let's do the mental math. So you gotta be careful with all the negatives because it's a minus in between there. So the first distance from negative two to negative six is how much? Four, right? Can you say negative four? Does it matter? Because you're gonna end up what? Squaring it. So four squared is what? 16. From negative eight to five is how much? Three. Three squared, nine. So now we just have the square root of what? And the square root of 25 is what? Five. I told you, it's really simple. All right, really, really simple. Okay, so let's knock out number nine. All right. So again, everybody's expected to write down D equals square root. And then I have four minus negative four, which is what? Eight. And eight squared is 64. Plus, from negative three to five is how much? Eight, eight squared is? Okay, now again, I need everybody to pay attention. How many 64s do I see? So I was hoping you would just look at that instead of saying 64 plus 64 is 128 and then try to break it down, you should be able to look at that and just say, well, that's eight radical two. Now, again, how did I know that? Because 64 plus 64 is what? Two 64s. Right, does everybody understand what I just did? All right. When I see something as a perfect square, I don't want to ruin it. All right, everybody okay with that? Okay, I think that's good. All right. Now let's go down to the Pythagorean theorem. Can anybody tell me what the Pythagorean theorem is from? Right, the oldest proof. All right, it's the oldest known proof. It's been proven thousands of times. Lots of different ways, right? But it's referencing a what type of triangle? It's referencing a nothing special other than it has to have a right angle. It has to have a right angle. So this is referencing a right triangle, all right? They say the two legs of the right triangle are A and B. 
All right, the largest side, which is opposite the nine degree is letter C. And for whatever reason, they decided to call that the hypotenuse. All right, these two sides are just called the legs. All right. And A is also considered a leg. And what's the relationship? Every right triangle will satisfy this condition. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Like I said, I'll prove that for you next year um, and show you how simple it is. Very common, all right. So now with that information, all we're doing is we're finding the missing side. So what's the missing side at number 11? C, right? So we just write A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Five squared plus 12 squared equals C squared. So what's five squared? Plus 144. So 169 equals C squared. Now, technically, when you take the square root, you're going to need a plus or what? Minus. But can distance be negative? No. So you technically just do what? You leave that off. You just say C equals 13. All right, C equals 13. Anybody have any issues with that? All right, so here we go. No, 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 definitely not. All right. So for example, A squared, let's go ahead, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Five squared plus five squared equals C squared. 25 plus 25 equals C squared, right? Mm -hmm. So how many C squareds do I have? Yeah. Right, so C squared equals two times 25. So C is equal to five radical two. Anybody have a problem with that? Five radical two, anybody? Anybody have any issues? I mean, if you say 25 plus 25, you get what? And then break 50 down. Oh, okay. Right, it's the same thing. Oh, okay. Right, just one less step. All right, let's knock out 15 now. All right, here we go again. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Five, uh-oh, plus, what's the next one? Twenty, right? Yeah. You're squaring two radical five. And what's two squared? And radical five squared. So four times five. All right, so then we just add that up real quick. 25 equals C squared, so C must have been what? five easy as that all right now what i did was on the back page or the last problems what i did was i just went through and pulled out from the sats from the acts just to show you uh there's a lot of questions dealing with radicals all right a lot of questions dealing with radicals all right so let's do a couple of these real quick all right so first and foremost, I need everybody to tell me what is the distance between those two points. All right, if you forgot the formula, just flip back. All right. Yes, that's right. No, you're right. That's exactly the right answer. I don't know why they didn't just simplify it. You know what I mean? All right, so definitely H is correct, but we'll just verify his results. So again, from negative eight to four is how much? 12 squared. What's 12 squared? And then from four to nine is how much? 
five squared. And there you have it. Now, like I said, I'm not sure why they left it as the square root of 169. Maybe it's for kids who do the calculator. They wouldn't know how to do it. I don't know. All right, so let's look at 18 now. Let's review 18. All right, here we go. So again, there's no reason for any um, calculator for this. Nine to the one half is what? No, 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 nine to the one half. Three, because to the one half power just means square roots, right? So the square root of nine is three. Square root of 16 is four. And then we're squaring. So what's three plus four squared? Yeah, 49. All right, let's do another one just to make sure. All right, here we go. What number cubed is 64? Four, thank you. So now we just figured out that X equals four. All right, and because X equals four, I need to figure out then what is X squared plus the square root of X? What is it? Somebody said 18, because we're just doing what? Four squared plus the square root of four. Sixteen plus two equals eighteen. All right, girls, you're having too much fun today. All right, that's why I hate these dress down days. I complain about it every single year. Twenty. Here we go. I don't care about having fun. I care about teaching you math. Yeah. All right. Here we go. A equals five radical two. All right, this one's a little bit challenging. So let me give you a minute, see if you can come up with the answer. You got it already? Well, hold on, hold on. Let everybody else give it a shot. Everybody's looking at 20. All right, I got one answer is what? So I have a hundred, I've got a 10. What did you get? 100, 10, 100. All right, so just to make sure, I'm multiplying A by two. Does everybody agree with that? So if I multiply A by two, that just becomes 10 radical two equals radical two X. Everybody agree with that? Now it's kind of like where we were on Friday. All right, we have an equation with a radical, so we square both sides. When I square the right side, it equals what? Square and square root do what to each other? 2x, thank you. And then what is 10 radical 2 squared? What is 10 radical 2 squared? 200, thank you very much. All right, because 10 squared is 100, squared of two squared is two, and then we just divide by two, so x is equal to 100. All right, super important, go. Could you also like, find out that like, five is just 25 and put it in there instead of making the square? Yeah, there's lots of ways to do it. You with me? I just tried to show you the math. You can, you can also divide by radical two and then square. I mean, there's lots of, different words my, my main concern is that you understand it's yeah. 100 as long as you got 100 like i said there's lots of different ways of looking at that all right so with that little bit of information it, I, I always tell kids it's embarrassing these guys this is directly from like your sat and act all right so everybody take a look at 21 this is how embarrassing it is embarrassingly easy yeah i don't even understand it 
right? I don't even understand. All right, 3x. You would be surprised. That's what I'm telling you. All right. So now let's take a look at 23. Last one for today. All right, I want you to work backwards and I want you to try to figure out what the radius is. And what I did was I went ahead and posted the formula just in case you forgot from last year what the volume of a cone is. And then when you think you have it, let me know. All right, who's got it? What'd you get? Thank you. Somebody else? I got a six so far. Six, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of easy. All right, it's kind of easy. All right, now remember, your job is to try to remember to work backwards. Does everybody agree there's a pie on both sides of the equation? So what can I do to the pies? Cancel them out, because it's all multiplication. So I'm gonna cancel out the pies, come on. Cancel and cancel. Now, how do I get rid of one third? Multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by three. That gets rid of this guy. Then how do I get rid of the two? Divide by two. That's it. All right. Now you can obviously do three times 24, but I was trying to tell kids it's easier to divide first. So 24 divided by two times three. So that's where you're getting 36 equals R squared. And then to cancel out the square, I just do what? Take the square root or radical. That is correct. So that's how easy this is. So R is equal to what? Six. It's not that hard. And I'm trying to show you how important it is. ERBs, they're going to ask some questions about radicals as well. All right. That's what we're trying to get ready for. All right, now your job tonight for homework is to finish, please. Shouldn't take you much time. We have a few minutes left in class right now. I'd like for you to try to get it done. All right, don't play around, get it done. Thank you, good job.